Hello and welcome to this video essay is thingy majiggy about memory optimization. Why is memory optimization important in the first place? I don't think it's gonna be a video essay by the way, I can't really talk that long. Anyway, um, let's talk about memory optimization. See, the thing about memory optimization is that there's just one issue and the issue is your graphic card is insanely good at rendering stuff. I'm gonna just show you just a quick demonstration, okay? I'm just gonna turn off the adaptive just to make things faster. Change this up to five, this up to five as well, because why the hell not? And let's just switch to say the CPU. Press F12 and we wait. So this is taking around 96 megabytes of peak memory. That's not really that big of a deal, but the thing is it's gonna take forever to render because I'm using the CPU. I'm not using the GPU at all and it's the expected time is around eight minutes nine minutes whatever so i'm just gonna cancel this because it's gonna take too long if yeah and i can't talk for that long anyway so let's just cancel it also canceling it takes time as well so i'm just sad now anyway so gpu all right let's just press f12 and there we go it's already like it already has rendered more than what the cpu did and the other thing is it's gonna complete in just around like 30 40 seconds that's gonna be it so that's like the major difference between the cpu and the gpu renders right speed and you kind of want that speed so this is where i'm gonna start talking about memory optimization number one you want speed number two you can't have speed if your graphic card can't actually be used to render the scene number three your graphic card can't be used to render a scene if your scene uses more memory, more graphic memory, than the graphic card has to offer. So for example, if your graphic card has, say, 10 gigabytes of graphic memory, well, if your scene uses more than that amount, all right, you're out of luck. You just can't render it at all. And this is even worse if you're on Windows, by the way, because for Windows, Windows kind of limits every piece of software to just 8 gigab... Sorry, not 8, to 80% or 90%, whatever the number is, of your graphic card. Now, obviously, you can change that. But, yeah, it's kind of iffy, so it's just better to just use Linux if that's the case. But anyway, we're not going to talk about that, that, that whole thing right now. How do you optimize your memory in the first place? All right, you get rid of geometry that's not important to your scene. So right now, if I just come over here to the render, sorry, not the render tab. What is this tab called? The output tab. So if I just disable this for now, all right, there's all of this other geometry that I just don't need. My scene does not need that. So in some cases, your scene might have geometry that you kind of need on the outside because say it's a light source or it's a massive object that's drawing a shadow. So that's perfectly fine to keep, but does that shadow object thingy majiggy, whatever it is, does it need all of those subdivisions on it at that point? Uh, no, it doesn't. So that's why it's a good idea to just make sure that, okay, all the objects that are not gonna be in my scene, they're gonna have low subdivisions on it. And all of the objects that are in my scene, they're gonna have a higher subdivision on it. And it's also a good idea to make sure that, okay, any object that's far away, it's gonna be low poly or just low quality, whatever. And any object that's up close, just maximum subdivisions. And that's kind of what the adaptive thing over here does. It does stuff based on the distance and the settings can be controlled over here in the render tab. And actually it's even better because it doesn't do it just based on the distance. It does it based on the pixel size. So anything that's, you know, right now, larger than a pixel it'll get subdivided up to a maximum of 12 times and after those 12 subdivisions it's just going to be like all right you don't need to subdivide it anymore now there is a way to visualize this and you can do this during the shading so i'm just going to add in a node over here that's called the wireframe node and just connect that over here to this surface and now you're going to be able to see all of the wireframes for you know um, after the subdivisions have been have taken place so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna come over here to subdivisions and change this to say one pixel and it is gonna take a this is gonna take some time to do this but there you go the wireframes right now are so small that you just straight up it it's pretty much white right now and the thing is it gets better than this because if i double tap tab uh it's just gonna update the mesh right now and and i think it should just be straight up white from this distance. I'm gonna have to wait though. 
So this is one way to optimize your memory usage because it's mm, subdividing stuff based on its distance from the camera sort of, right? And that's good and all, but you can't always use adaptive subdivisions. You just can't, okay? Um, and in those cases, it's a good idea to just hide objects that are off camera. May use lower poly models. If your character has a low poly model or if your character has a high quality model, then switch between them depending on how far away the character is from the camera. And you can even do the switching like you can use tricks, for example, something is passing in front of the character and during that like during that pass, you can just switch the model from low quality to high quality. And this happens, this happens a lot in animation and it's not really a problem. So right now it just cancels because I'm pretty sure my graphic card can't handle this. So I'm just gonna change it up to four pixels now. I'm sad now, I'm super sad. Anyway, so this, is, this isn't really the point. My point was that all right, there are a lot of ways to lower your memory usage and it is a good idea to lower your memory usage because on the other side of the things, you're just going to have to use a render form that's based purely on CPU. And yeah, that's not really that big of a problem either because um, Blender's own animations, I believe, have been done on CPUs. And that's primarily because the scenes were so complex that they had to use a CPU. They just couldn't use a GPU. So yeah, the other thing is like there needs to be a fine line between the quality and your actual ability to render something because if the render times on your CPU are going to be six to eight times longer than your GPU, then yeah, something that would have taken say a day to render on your GPU is all of a sudden going to take more than a week. Um, that's not really acceptable for most people and for studios that have say you know, just a deadline or just a timeline to follow, then they can't really do that either. Being able to optimize your memory usage is a skill that pretty much every 3D artist, 3D designer, modeler, everyone should have. There is no need for added geometry when you don't need it in the first place. So, all right, so what can you do to optimize your modeling? I'm just gonna create, say, just the simplest thing possible, a cube with a rounded edge, but I'm gonna make it in the most horrible way possible, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a bevel and just add in subsurface divisions. Mm, okay, that looks really fine. I'm just gonna shade this smooth. And okay, this is a beveled cube. So I'm just gonna move the camera over here and render this. By the way, this is me trying to mimic a really bad uh, 3D model. Anyway, um, oh no, there's an edge over here. I don't want that edge. So instead of increasing the bevel count, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the number of subdivisions from three to four just to overkill stuff and make sure there's no edge at the end of the day. And oh, okay, that still didn't fix my edge. So what am I gonna do? Okay, I'm just gonna increase the number of segments over here. Oh no, my entire shape just got ruined. What will I do now? Um, okay, I guess I just need to change the width for this. Like, okay, I guess it's fine now, F12. Mm, all right. Oh yeah, it seems really nice and round now. So yeah, I did it, congratulations me. Um, okay. I didn't really intend to mock any of you, so I'm really sorry if that was offensive. But yeah, all you need to do is just add in a cube. Um, so this is the destructive way to do it. Control B, they do this, and right click, shade smooth, and you have your rounded edges that you want. All right, so you're not really happy with the rounded edge. Um, I'm not gonna go super crazy. And I'm not gonna just add in say four subdivisions. I'm just gonna add in a single one, just one subdivision. And that should be perfectly fine. Let me just quickly render that. And all right, it actually looks really decent and round now. Huh, I wonder where things went wrong. Um, see, things went wrong when I did the bevel modifier over here. So there is actually an even better way to do it. Just move this over here. Instead of getting into edit mode and pressing Control B to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, one second, add a bevel modifier and just change this to three because three segment looks three segments look really nice. And all right, I want it to be more round, so I'm just gonna move this over as well. 
maybe add in one subsurface division, shade this smooth, and that's perfectly fine. Yeah, this looks really nice. Let's just render that in as well. Now, um, looks wise, between these three cubes, um, apart from you know the distance for the bevel modifier not matching up because I just eyeballed it, there isn't really a lot of difference. But the thing is, at the end of the day, what's gonna happen is you want, say, 500 of these cubes, all right? I'm just gonna array this at around 1.1. You want 100 of these cubes, all right? Relative offset, like that. And my viewport is already chugging. Just increasing this up to 100, increase the number of vertices in my viewport to 1.3 million, 1.4 million almost. And the reason for that is actually, if I just hide this, hide this, hide the plane as well, just this one cube is responsible for 13.8 thousand vertices. All right, can I just get into edit mode and see it over here? Oh, I can't. All right, so just this one cube, 13.8 thousand. And let's just select everything. I, mean, I don't really need this at all. All right, let's just uh, hide the other two. Just this cube, 600 vertices. Absolutely nothing wrong. Hide both of these. This cube, 386 vertices. Absolutely nothing wrong. And I'm pretty sure if I add an array for this for even 100, it's not gonna make anything chug. Like everything is gonna be perfectly fine. There's 38,600 vertices in the scene. There's actually 100 of these cubes, but there is nothing wrong with this viewport right now. Like it's super fast compared to everything else. So like 100 of these cubes is equal to like two of these, just two of these. And that's the thing, um, you need to have just in the back of your mind, memory optimization when you're modeling, when you're creating the scene, when you're creating assets, especially if you're creating game assets because games cannot handle a lot of assets. Games don't have infinite RAM. Imagine a game that uses like three gigabytes of memory just to render a landscape. No, that's not okay. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, let me know. I can't really talk anymore on this for now, but I do want to touch back on this subject in the future as well. This is different from what I usually do on the channel. Drop a like, subscribe, stay around, whatever you want to do. Have fun, guys. And please don't burn out your GPUs.